Welcome back. Chris, tell me about the transition from medicine and private practice to entering the army. What prompted that decision? That was a long-standing interest. I had some support at medical school um, from the uh, Army Medical Corps. Okay. Um, Was there a bit I, of headhunting going on there? Perhaps? Yes. Um, most Army doctors would come from medical undergraduates that have been supported okay. um, by the Army. Yep. I had some time to pay back. I, I did a couple of years in Darwin. Um, and uh, they posted me to 8-9 uh, Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, based at Anogra in Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. And I've been here ever since. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 I, mean, I come from a military background as well. My, my, my father was in the army for many years, and we spent a, a few years travelling around. Lived in the US, and mm. lived in Papua New Guinea. And my father served at Anogra as well. How, how is medicine in the army in, in, different to private practice? I mean, the principles are still the same, but the circumstances into which you're thrust are mm. quite different, aren't they? Well, army medicine is very interesting. Military medicine is very interesting. Mm. Uh, it's not all fit, young, healthy males. Yep. Significant proportion yep. obviously is, and there's a lot of uh, medical examinations and that sort of thing to be done. But the range of um, medical um, conditions that you see is quite significant. And being posted to an infantry battalion, um, you spend up to seven months a year out on exercises in Shoalwater Bay or Tin Can Bay or Cobar or... Um, wherever, and mm. that poses a whole lot of extra challenges for delivering good medical care. Mm. Um, frequently, uh, uh, the ability to move an injured person out at night was pretty restricted um, in some of these remote locations. Um, so it put a new and additional dimension, if you like, onto medical practice. Certainly, certainly. Learn a lot about life too while mm. serving time in the army. Oh, uh, yes, the young soldiers can teach you a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> Why then move out of the out of out of the military and back into public life? Is there, mm. th th I guess, there's a, a, a timeline associated with with life in the military. Well, there is. There's two two main factors. One, uh, my wife was also a doctor, and the itinerant life that's part of military life, yeah. uh, um, as we were expecting our first child at the time uh, as well, uh, was a problem. Um, but also in military practice, uh, as with a lot of other areas of life. Uh, as you get promoted, you get promoted away from the cold face of clinical practice, so yeah. um, and, and you become more a, a, um, an administrator, a, a logistics person. And I didn't want to do that at that young stage of my career. The thing about the army is that you don't really have a choice. If that's what the army decides yes, you're going to do. That's, that's what right. you're going to do. Because the it? green machine makes a few decisions for you. Yeah. Um, so it, I wanted to go into clinical practice, and uh, so. Um, um, I completed the time and did that. What was a, a more difficult transition from public life, uh, sorry, from private life into the army or from the army back into private life? Um, the hardest transition is probably from private life into politics. Yeah, okay. Um, no, I don't think uh, there's any great problem with the transitions. I mean, they're different roles. Yep. Um, the army, uh, things tend to be very black and white. Um, so... If someone's a higher rank than you, they're right. Yeah. If they're a lower rank than you, you're right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's how um, military has worked for centuries and it's probably the only way it can work. Yeah, yeah um, that's not likely to change very soon. Yes, right. Yeah. When you move in, no, it's not going to change at yeah. all. Yeah. When you move into civilian life, you have to earn that respect um, and, uh, you know, it's not so black and white. At that stage in your life, did you have a, a, a maybe an idea about politics bubbling away in the background? Yeah, the politics has always been there. Yeah, um, always been there. What, what what was it that first caught, gave you that spark of interest in politics? You remember what it was? Remember what it was about? Obviously, you know, you, you said before that there was an interest in the mm. home. Is mm. there something in particular that you can remember thinking, you know, I reckon mm. I could do that better than him or her, or maybe I just need to get involved? Uh, well, I have a look at. Um, Politics, particularly at the state level, is about administering things efficiently. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's good to have all the media skills and uh, everything else, and you have to have those things. But essentially, we run bread and butter services like, you know, building roads, running schools, running hospitals. Mm. Um, and uh, it's my strong view that we haven't been doing those things very well. And in fact, I would go further and say that we've done them rather poorly. Um, and I think there's there's a place for people that can administer uh, those things effectively. 
military is a great training for that as well, isn't it? Um, that's right. The, mm. the military train you specifically in leadership. Um, uh, every and there are a lot of military people, uh, you know, like Campbell Newman and Mal Bruff and a whole range of others that mm. uh, have military backgrounds. And of course, leadership is one of the things that's strongly promoted in the military. You guys with a common background in the military tend to hang out together? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that because they've all come from different uh, parts of the military yeah. and so forth. But it's a, it's a common part of our heritage and uh, the experiences that form you. You've been in politics since what, middle of the... Since February 2004. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk more about that. Obviously, how, how would you sum up the last eight years of life in politics so far? It's been an interesting ride. It was a very steep learning curve yeah. uh, at a very difficult uh, and important juncture in Queensland politics yeah. where um, in 2001, the, the House prior to my election, we were reduced to a a small rump, uh, the Liberal Party, I was the precursor of the uh, LNP, had only three remaining members. Mm. Um, there was a huge rebuilding process there. Um, when political parties get wiped out in that way, um, as happened to Labor a couple of decades earlier, yeah. uh, you don't recover overnight and you don't recover and win the next election, almost without exception. Um, so there's been that building process. There's been one or two false starts along the way. Mm -hmm. um, obviously a big leap forward once the parties were merged and that question that nobody could ever answer, you know, who's going to be Premier, yeah. uh, is no longer a relevant question. Um, and, and obviously that had been used by political opponents to their advantage for um, many, many years. Um, it, it, when you had two potentially large and... and potentially either could have been the larger party, um, that division really, uh, it became obvious, was incompatible with ultimately being elected to government and that's why the decisions were made to merge them. Mm. I mean, once you make that decision that that's what you're going to do, there's no pulling back because it's not how you imagined it. Mm. Has it been an enjoyable process for you so far? I mean, have you enjoyed it? Would you may have done it differently if you'd had the option of the hindsight that you now have? Uh, look, I think uh, I don't think there's any of us who wouldn't do something different yeah. with the benefit of hindsight. Uh, but you make the decisions based on what you know at the time. Um, and uh, it's certainly been a very uh, interesting ride. I was Shadow Health Minister during the health mm. crisis. Um, I had a stint as Shadow Treasurer, stint as Liberal Leader. Um, and now the last two and a half years, very exciting portfolios in education and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander partnerships. We'll talk more after the break. You're watching Meet the Ministers. We'll be back with you.